Genetically Modified Organism, Wikipedia Audio A genetically modified organism is any organism whose genetic material has been altered using genetic engineering techniques. GMOs are used to produce many medications and genetically modified foods and are widely used in scientific research and the production of other goods. The term GMO is very close to the technical legal term, living modified organism, defined in the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety, which regulates international trade in living GMOs. A more specifically defined type of GMO is a transgenic organism. This is an organism whose genetic makeup has been altered by the addition of genetic material from an unrelated organism. This should not be confused with the more general way in which GMO is used to classify genetically altered organisms, as typically GMOs are organisms whose genetic makeup has been altered without the addition of genetic material from an unrelated organism. The first genetically modified mouse was created in 1974, and the first plant was produced in 1983. Production Genetic modification involves the mutation, insertion, or deletion of genes. Inserted genes usually come from a different species in a form of horizontal gene transfer. In nature this can occur when exogenous DNA penetrates the cell membrane for any reason. This can be accomplished artificially by Other methods exploit natural forms of gene transfer such as the ability of agrobacterium to transfer genetic material to plants, or the ability of lentiviruses to transfer genes to animal cells. Attaching the genes to a virus, physically inserting the extra DNA into the nucleus of the intended host with a very small syringe, using electroporation, firing small particles from a gene gun. Humans have domesticated plants and animals since around 12,000 BCE, using selective breeding or artificial selection, 25 the process of selective breeding, in which organisms with desired traits are used to breed the next generation and organisms lacking the trait are not bred, is a precursor to the modern concept of genetic modification, 1. One various advancements in genetics allowed humans to directly alter the DNA and therefore genes of organisms. In 1972 Paul Berg created the first recombinant DNA molecule when he combined DNA from a monkey virus with that of the Lambda virus. Herbert Boyer and Stanley Cohen made the first genetically modified organism in 1973. They took a gene from a bacterium that provided resistance to the antibiotic canamycin, inserted it into a plasmid and then induced another bacteria to uptake the plasmid. The bacteria was then able to survive in the presence of canamycin. Boyer and Cohen expressed other genes in bacteria. This included genes from the toad Xenopus laevis in 1974 creating the first GMO expressing a gene from an organism from different kingdom. In 1974 Rudolf Janisch created a transgenic mouse by introducing foreign DNA into its embryo, making it the world's first transgenic animal. However it took another eight years before transgenic mice were developed that passed the transgene to their offspring. Genetically modified mice were created in 1984 that carried cloned oncogenes, predisposing them to developing cancer. Mice with genes knocked out were created in 1989. The first transgenic livestock were produced in 1985 and the first animal to synthesize transgenic proteins in their milk were mice engineered to produce human tissue plasminogen activator in 1987. In 1983 the first genetically engineered plant was developed by Michael W. Bevan, Richard B. Flavel and Mary Del Chilton. 
They infected tobacco with agrobacterium transformed with an antibiotic resistance gene and through tissue culture techniques were able to grow a new plant containing the resistance gene. The gene gun was invented in 1987, allowing transformation of plants not susceptible to agrobacterium infection. In 2000, vitamin A enriched golden rice was the first plant developed with increased nutrient value. In 1976 Genentech, the first genetic engineering company was founded by Herbert Boyer and Robert Swanson, a year later, the company produced a human protein in E. coli. Genentech announced the production of genetically engineered human insulin in 1978. The insulin produced by bacteria, branded humulin, was approved for release by the Food and Drug Administration in 1982. In 1988 the first human antibodies were produced in plants. In 1987, the ice strain of Pseudomonas syringae became the first genetically modified organism to be released into the environment when a strawberry field and a potato field in California were sprayed with it. The first genetically modified crop, an antibiotic resistant tobacco plant, was produced in 1982. China was the first country to commercialize transgenic plants, introducing a virus-resistant tobacco in 1992. In 1994 Colgene attained approval to commercially release the Flavor SAVR tomato, the first genetically modified food. Also in 1994, the European Union approved tobacco engineered to be resistant to the herbicide bromoxenol making it the first genetically engineered crop commercialized in Europe. An insect-resistant potato was approved for release in the U.S. in 1995, and by 1996 approval had been granted to commercially grow eight transgenic crops and one flower crop in six countries plus the EU. In 2010, scientists at the J. Craig Venter Institute announced that they had created the first synthetic bacterial genome. They named it Synthia and it was the world's first synthetic life form. History The first genetically modified animal to be commercialized was the glowfish, a zebra fish with a fluorescent gene added that allows it to glow in the dark under ultraviolet light. The first genetically modified animal to be approved for food use was Aquadvantage salmon in 2015. The salmon were transformed with a growth hormone regulating gene from a Pacific Chinook salmon and a promoter from an ocean pout enabling it to grow year-round instead of only during spring and summer. GMOs are used in biological and medical research production of pharmaceutical drugs, experimental medicine, and agriculture, with developing uses in conservation. The term genetically modified organism does not always imply, but can include, targeted insertions of genes from one species into another. For example, a gene from a jellyfish, encoding a fluorescent protein called GFP, or green fluorescent protein, can be physically linked and thus CO expressed with mammalian genes to identify the location of the protein encoded by the GFP tagged gene in the mammalian cell. Such methods are useful tools for biologists in many areas of research, including those who study the mechanisms of human and other diseases or fundamental biological processes in eukaryotic or prokaryotic cells. Bacteria were the first organisms to be modified in the laboratory, due to the relative ease of modifying their genetics. They continue to be important model organisms for experiments in genetic engineering. In the field of synthetic biology, they have been used to test various synthetic approaches, from synthesizing genomes to creating novel nucleotides. These organisms are now used for several purposes, 
and are particularly important in producing large amounts of pure human proteins for use in medicine. Genetically modified bacteria are used to produce the protein insulin to treat diabetes. Similar bacteria have been used to produce biofuels, clotting factors to treat hemophilia, and human growth hormone to treat various forms of dwarfism. In 2017 researchers genetically modified a virus to express spinach defense in proteins. The virus was injected into orange trees to combat citrus greening disease that had reduced orange production 70% since 2005. Uses Microbes In addition, various genetically engineered microorganisms are routinely used as sources of enzymes for the manufacture of a variety of processed foods. These include alpha amylase from bacteria, which converts starch to simple sugars, chymosin from bacteria or fungi, which clots milk protein for cheese making, and pectin esterase from fungi, which improves fruit juice clarity. Bacteria Virus Other Plants Transgenic plants Transgenic plants have been engineered for scientific research, to create new colors in plants, and to create different crops. In research, plants are engineered to help discover the functions of certain genes. One way to do this is to knock out the gene of interest and see what phenotype develops. Another strategy is to attach the gene to a strong promoter and see what happens when it is overexpressed. A common technique used to find out where the gene is expressed is to attach it to GUS or a similar reporter gene that allows visualization of the location. After 13 years of collaborative research, an Australian company Florigene, and a Japanese company Suntory, created a blue rose in 2004. The genetic engineering involved three alterations adding two genes, and interfering with another. One of the added genes was for the blue plant pigment delphinidin cloned from the pansy. The researchers then used RNA interference technology to depress all color production by endogenous genes by blocking a crucial protein in color production called dihydroflavanol 4 reductase, and adding a variant of that protein that would not be blocked by the RNAi but that would allow the delphinidin to work. The roses are sold in Japan, the United States, and Canada. Florigene has also created and sells lavender-colored carnations that are genetically engineered in a similar way. Genetically Modified Crops Simple plants and plant cells have been genetically engineered for production of biopharmaceuticals in bioreactors as opposed to cultivating plants in open fields. Work has been done with duckweed lemna minor, the algae Chlamydomonas reinhardii and the moss Fiscomitrella patens. An Israeli company, Prod Alex, has developed a method to produce therapeutics in cultured transgenic carrot and tobacco cells. Prod Alex and its partner, Pfizer, received FDA approval to market its drug Il Liso, a treatment for Gaucher's disease, in 2012. Genetically modified crops are plants used in agriculture, the DNA of which has been modified using genetic engineering techniques. In most cases the aim is to introduce a new trait to the plant which does not occur naturally in the species. Examples in food crops include resistance to certain pests, diseases, or environmental conditions, reduction of spoilage, or resistance to chemical treatments, or improving the nutrient profile of the crop. Examples in non-food crops include production of pharmaceutical agents, biofuels, and other industrially useful goods, as well as for bioremediation. 
farmers have widely adopted GM technology. Between 1996 and 2013, the total surface area of land cultivated with GM crops increased by a factor of 100, from 17,000 square kilometers to 1,750,000 kilometers to 10% of the world's croplands were planted with GM crops in 2010. In the U.S., by 2014, 94% of the planted area of soybeans, 96% of cotton and 93% of corn were genetically modified varieties. In recent years GM crops expanded rapidly in developing countries. In 2013 approximately 18 million farmers grew 54% of worldwide GM crops in developing countries. For discussions of issues about GM crops and GM food, see the controversies section below in the article on genetically modified food controversies. Cisgenesis, sometimes also called INTRA genesis is a product designation for a category of genetically engineered plants. A variety of classification schemes have been proposed that order genetically modified organisms based on the nature of introduced genotypical changes rather than the process of genetic engineering. While some genetically modified plants are developed by the introduction of a gene originating from distant, sexually incompatible species into the host genome, cisgenic plants contain genes that have been isolated either directly from the host species or from sexually compatible species. The new genes are introduced using recombinant DNA methods and gene transfer. Some scientists hope that the approval process of cisgenic plants might be simpler than that of proper transgenics, but it remains to be seen. Genetically modified organisms have been proposed to aid conservation of plant species threatened by extinction. Many trees face the threat of invasive plants and diseases, such as the emerald ash borer in North America and the fungal disease, Ceratocystis platani, in European plane trees. A suggested solution to increase the resilience of threatened tree species is to genetically modify individuals by transferring resistant genes. Papaya trees are an example of a species that was successfully conserved using genetic modification. The papaya ring spot virus devastated papaya trees in Hawaii in the 20th century until transgenic papaya plants were given pathogen-derived resistance. Cisgenic plants. However, genetic modification for conservation in plants remains mainly speculative and further experimentation is needed before the technique can be widely implemented. A main concern with using genetic modification for conservation purposes is that a transgenic species may no longer bear enough resemblance to the original species to truly claim that the original species is being conserved. Instead, the transgenic species may be genetically different enough to be considered a new species, thus diminishing the conservation worth of genetic modification. Genetically modified mammals are an important category of genetically modified organisms. Ralph L. Brinster and Richard Palmiter developed the techniques responsible for transgenic mice, rats, rabbits, sheep, and pigs in the early 1980s, and established many of the first transgenic models of human disease, including the first carcinoma caused by a transgene. The process of genetically engineering animals is a slow, tedious, and expensive process. However, new technologies are making genetic modifications easier and more precise. Conservation in Plants The first transgenic animal was produced by injecting DNA into mouse embryos then implanting the embryos in female mice. 
genetically modified animals currently being developed can be placed into six different broad classes based on the intended purpose of the genetic modification. Mammals Research Use Human Therapeutics and Xenotransplants Transgenic animals are used as experimental models to perform phenotypic and for testing in biomedical research. Genetically modified animals are becoming more vital to the discovery and development of cures and treatments for many serious diseases. By altering the DNA or transferring DNA to an animal, we can develop certain proteins that may be used in medical treatment. Stable expressions of human proteins have been developed in many animals, including sheep, pigs, and rats. Human alpha-1 antitrypsin, which has been tested in sheep and is used in treating humans with this deficiency and transgenic pigs with human histocompatibility have been studied in the hopes that the organs will be suitable for transplant with less chances of rejection. Scientists have genetically engineered several organisms, including some mammals, to include green fluorescent protein, first observed in the jellyfish, Equoria victoria in 1962, for medical research purposes. For example, fluorescent pigs have been bred to study human organ transplants, regenerating ocular photoreceptor cells, and other topics. In 2011 a Japanese-American team created green fluorescent cats to find therapies for HIV-AIDS and other diseases as feline immunodeficiency virus is related to HIV. In 2009, scientists in Japan announced that they had successfully transferred a gene into a primate species and produced a stable line of breeding transgenic primates for the first time. Their first research target for these marmosets was Parkinson's disease, but they were also considering amyotrophic lateral sclerosis and Huntington's disease. Within the field known as farming, intensive research has been conducted to develop transgenic animals that produce biotherapeutics. On February 6, 2009, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved the first human biological drug produced from such an animal, a goat. The drug, ATRYN, is an anticoagulant which reduces the probability of blood clots during surgery or childbirth. It is extracted from the goat's milk. Some animals are also genetically modified so that they can provide organs that are suitable and safe to transplant into humans. An example are pigs that are genetically modified so that their organs can no longer carry retroviruses. Other genetically modified pigs have had alpha-galactosidase transferase knocked out and fortified with HCD46 and the HDM molecule. Pig lungs from genetically modified pigs for instance are already being considered for transplantation into humans. Besides use of genetic modification to allow the providing of safer animal organs for transplantation, genetic modification can also be used to allow the animal to grow human organs inside their body. Such animals, which are hence composed of a mixture of cells from more than one species, are called Chimeras One Project, undertaken by Pablo Ross of the University of California, involves the growing of a human pancreas inside a pig. In 2006, a pig was engineered to produce omega-3 fatty acids through the expression of a roundworm gene. Enviropig was a genetically enhanced line of Yorkshire pigs in Canada created with the capability of digesting plant phosphorus more efficiently than conventional Yorkshire pigs. The project ended in 2012. These pigs produced the enzyme phytase, which breaks down the indigestible phosphorus, in their saliva. The enzyme was introduced into the pig chromosome by pronuclear microinjection. With this enzyme, 
the animal is able to digest cereal grain phosphorus. The use of these pigs would reduce the potential of water pollution since they excrete from 30 to 70.7 percent less phosphorus in manure depending upon the age and diet. The lower concentrations of phosphorus in surface runoff reduces algal growth, because phosphorus is the limiting nutrient for algae. Because algae consume large amounts of oxygen, it can result in dead zones for fish. In 2011, Chinese scientists generated dairy cows genetically engineered with genes from human beings to produce milk that would be the same as human breast milk. This could potentially benefit mothers who cannot produce breast milk but want their children to have breast milk rather than formula. Aside from milk production, the researchers claim these transgenic cows to be identical to regular cows. Two months later scientists from Argentina presented Rosita, a transgenic cow incorporating two human genes, to produce milk with similar properties as human breast milk. In 2012, researchers from New Zealand also developed a genetically engineered cow that produced allergy-free milk. Goats have been genetically engineered to produce milk with strong spiderweb-like silk proteins in their milk. Gene therapy, uses genetically modified viruses to deliver genes which can cure disease in humans. Although gene therapy is still relatively new, it has had some successes. It has been used to treat genetic disorders such as severe combined immunodeficiency, and labors congenital amaurosis. Treatments are also being developed for a range of other currently incurable diseases, such as cystic fibrosis, sickle cell anemia, Parkinson's disease, cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and muscular dystrophy. Genetically modified organisms have been used to conserve European wild rabbits in the Iberian Peninsula and Australia. In both cases, the genetically modified organism used was a myxoma virus, but for opposite purposes, to protect the endangered population in Europe with immunizations and to regulate the overabundant population in Australia with contraceptives. In the Iberian Peninsula, the European wild rabbit population has experienced a sharp decline from viral diseases and overhunting. To protect the species from viral diseases, the myxoma virus was genetically modified to immunize the rabbits. The European wild rabbit population in Australia faces the opposite problem, lack of natural predators has made the introduced species invasive. The same myxoma virus was genetically modified to lower fertility in the Australian rabbit population. Genetically modified fish are used for scientific research and as pets, and are being considered for use as food and as aquatic pollution sensors. GM fish are widely used in basic research in genetics and development. Two species of fish, zebrafish and madaka, are most commonly modified because they have optically clear corians, rapidly develop and the one-cell embryo is easy to see and micro-inject with transgenic DNA. The Glowfish is a patented brand of genetically modified fluorescent zebrafish with bright red, green, and orange fluorescent color. Although not originally developed for the ornamental fish trade, it became the first genetically modified animal to become publicly available as a pet when it was introduced for sale in 2003. They were quickly banned for sale in California. GM fish have been developed with promoters driving an overproduction of all fish growth hormone for use in the aquaculture industry to increase the speed of development and potentially reduce fishing pressure on wild stocks. This has resulted in dramatic growth enhancement in several species, including salmon, trout, and tilapia. Aquabounty Technologies, a biotechnology company working on bringing a GM salmon to market, 
claims that their GM AquaVantage salmon can mature in half the time as wild salmon. AquaBounty applied for regulatory approval to market their GM salmon in the US, and was approved in November 2015. On November 25, 2013 Canada approved commercial scale production and export of GM salmon eggs but they are not approved for human consumption in Canada. Several academic groups have been developing GM zebrafish to detect aquatic pollution. The lab that originated the glowfish discussed above originally developed them to change color in the presence of pollutants, to be used as environmental sensors. A lab at University of Cincinnati has been developing GM zebrafish for the same purpose, as has a lab at Tulane University. Recent research on pain in fish has resulted in concerns being raised that genetic modifications induced for scientific research may have detrimental effects on the welfare of fish. Genetically modified frogs are used for scientific research and are widely used in basic research including genetics and early development. Two species of frog, Xenopus laevis and Xenopus tropicalis, are most commonly used. GM frogs are also being used as pollution sensors, especially for endocrine disrupting chemicals. In biological research, transgenic fruit flies are model organisms used to study the effects of genetic changes on development. Fruit flies are often preferred over other animals due to their short life cycle, low maintenance requirements, and relatively simple genome compared to many vertebrates. In 2010, scientists created malaria-resistant mosquitoes in the laboratory. The World Health Organization estimated that malaria killed almost 1 million people in 2008. Genetically modified male mosquitoes containing a lethal gene have been developed to combat the spread of dengue fever and the Zika virus. Aedes aegypti mosquitoes, the single most important carrier of dengue fever and the Zika virus, were reduced by 80% in a 2010 trial of these GM mosquitoes in the Cayman Islands and by 90% in a 2015 trial in Bahia, Brazil. In comparison, the Florida Keys Mosquito Control District has achieved only 30-60% population reduction with traps and pesticide spraying. In 2016 FDA approved a genetically modified mosquito intervention for Key West, Florida. UK firm Oxitec proposed the release of millions of modified male mosquitoes to compete with wild males for mates. The males are engineered so that their offspring die before maturing, helping to eradicate mosquito-borne disease. Final approval was to be based on a local referendum to be held in November. Andrea Crisanti, a molecular biologist at Imperial College in London is working on ways to stop the A. gambii mosquito from transmitting disease. A strain of Pectinophora gossipilla has been genetically engineered to express a red fluorescent protein. This allows researchers to monitor bollworms that have been sterilized by radiation and released to reduce bollworm infestation. The strain has been field tested for over three years and has been approved for release. Nadarias such as Hydra and the sea anemone Nematostella vectensis are attractive model organisms to study the evolution of immunity and certain developmental processes. An important technical breakthrough was the development of procedures for generation of stable transgenic hydras and sea anemones by embryo microinjection. The regulation of genetic engineering concerns the approaches taken by governments to assess and manage the risks associated with the use of genetic engineering technology and the development and release of genetically modified organisms, including genetically modified crops and genetically modified fish. There are differences in the regulation of GMOs between countries 
with some of the most marked differences occurring between the USA and Europe. Regulation varies in a given country depending on the intended use of the products of the genetic engineering. For example, a crop not intended for food use is generally not reviewed by authorities responsible for food safety. The European Union differentiates between approval for cultivation within the EU and approval for import and processing. While only a few GMOs have been approved for cultivation in the EU a number of GMOs have been approved for import and processing. The cultivation of GMOs has triggered a debate about the market for GMOs in Europe. Depending on the coexistence regulations, incentives for cultivation of GM crops differ. There is controversy over GMOs especially with regard to their use in producing food. The dispute involves buyers, biotechnology companies, governmental regulators, non-governmental organizations, and scientists. The key areas of controversy related to GMO food are whether GM food should be labeled, the role of government regulators, the effect of GM crops on health and the environment, the effect on pesticide resistance, the impact of GM crops for farmers, and the role of GM crops in feeding the world population. In 2014, sales of products that had been labeled as non-GMO grew 30% to $1.1 billion. There is a scientific consensus that currently available food derived from GM crops poses no greater risk to human health than conventional food, but that each GM food needs to be tested on a case-by-case -case basis before introduction. Nonetheless, members of the public are much less likely than scientists to perceive GM foods as safe. The legal and regulatory status of GM foods varies by country with some nations banning or restricting them, and others permitting them with widely differing degrees of regulation. No reports of ill effects have been proven in the human population from ingesting GM food. Although labeling of GMO products in the marketplace is required in many countries, it is not required in the United States and no distinction between marketed GMO and non-GMO foods is recognized by the U.S. FDA. In a May 2014 article in The Economist it was argued that, while GM foods could potentially help feed 842 million malnourished people globally, laws such as the one passed in Vermont, to require labeling of foods containing genetically modified ingredients, could have the unintended consequence of interrupting the process of spreading GM technologies to impoverished countries that suffer with food security problems. The Organic Consumers Association, and the Union of Concerned Scientists, and Greenpeace stated that risks have not been adequately identified and managed and they have questioned the objectivity of regulatory authorities. Some health groups say there are unanswered questions regarding the potential long-term impact on human health from food derived from GMOs, and propose mandatory labeling or a moratorium on such products. Concerns include contamination of the non-genetically modified food supply, effects of GMOs on the environment and nature, the rigor of the regulatory process, and consolidation of control of the food supply in companies that make and sell GMOs, or concerns over the use of herbicides with glyphosate. The literature about biodiversity and the GE food-slash-feed consumption has sometimes resulted in animated debate regarding the suitability of the experimental designs the choice of the statistical methods or the public accessibility of data. Such debate, even if positive and part of the natural process of review by the scientific community, has frequently been distorted by the media and often used politically and inappropriately in anti-GE crops campaigns. Domingo, Jose L., Bordenaba, Jordijan
a literature review on the safety assessment of genetically modified plants. Environment International 37 734 42 doi 10.1016/j.nvint.2011.01.003 pmid 2129643 in spite of this the number of studies specifically focused on safety assessment of gm plants is still limited however it is important to remark that for the first time, a certain equilibrium in the number of research groups suggesting, on the basis of their studies, that a number of varieties of GM products are as safe and nutritious as the respective conventional non-GM plant, and those raising still serious concerns, was observed. Moreover, it is worth mentioning that most of the studies demonstrating that GM foods are as nutritional and safe as those obtained by conventional breeding, have been performed by biotechnology companies or associates, which are also responsible of commercializing these GM plants. Anyhow, this represents a notable advance in comparison with the lack of studies published in recent years in scientific journals by those companies. Krimsky, Sheldon. An illusory consensus behind GMO health assessment. Science, Technology, and Human Values. 40, 132. doi, 101177 01622439155983813. I began this article with the testimonials from respected scientists that there is literally no scientific controversy over the health effects of GMOs. My investigation into the scientific literature tells another story. In contrast, Panchin, Alexander Y., Tuz Hickoff, Alexander I. Published GMO studies find no evidence of harm when corrected for multiple comparisons. Critical Reviews in Biotechnology 37, 15 doi, 10.3109-0738855.1.2015.11306864 ISSN 0738-8551 PMID 26767435 Here, we show that a number of articles some of which have strongly and negatively influenced the public opinion on GM crops and even provoked political actions, such as GMO embargo, share common flaws in the statistical evaluation of the data. Having accounted for these flaws, we conclude that the data presented in these articles does not provide any substantial evidence of GMO harm. The presented articles suggesting possible harm of GMOs received high public attention. However, despite their claims, they actually weaken the evidence for the harm and lack of substantial equivalency of studied GMOs. We emphasize that with over 1,783 published articles on GMOs over the last 10 years it is expected that some of them should have reported undesired differences between GMOs and conventional crops even if no such differences exist in reality. And Yang, Y.T., Chen, B. Governing GMOs in the USA Science, Law, and Public Health Journal of the Science of Food and Agriculture 96, 1851-55 doi, 10.1002-jsfa.7523 PMID 26536836 it is therefore not surprising that efforts to require labeling and to ban GMOs have been a growing political issue in the USA. Food Quality Traits Overall, a broad scientific consensus holds that currently marketed GM food poses no greater risk than conventional food. 
Major national and international science and medical associations have stated that no adverse human health effects related to GMO food have been reported or substantiated in peer-reviewed literature to date. Despite various concerns, today, the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the World Health Organization, and many independent international science organizations agree that GMOs are just as safe as other foods. Compared with conventional breeding techniques, genetic engineering is far more precise and, in most cases, less likely to create an unexpected outcome. Pinholster, Ginger AAAS Board of Directors Legally mandating GM food labels could mislead and falsely alarm consumers. American Association for the Advancement of Science Retrieved February 8, 2016 Report 2 of the Council on Science and Public Health, Labeling of Bioengineered Foods American Medical Association 2012 Archived from the original on September 7, 2012. Retrieved March 19, 2016. Bioengineered foods have been consumed for close to 20 years, and during that time, no overt consequences on human health have been reported and slash or substantiated in the peer-reviewed literature. CS1 maint, bot. Original URL status unknown. GM foods currently available on the international market have passed safety assessments and are not likely to present risks for human health. In addition, no effects on human health have been shown as a result of the consumption of such foods by the general population in the countries where they have been approved. Continuous application of safety assessments based on the Codex Alimentarius principles and, where appropriate, adequate post-market monitoring, should form the basis for ensuring the safety of GM foods. Human Gene Therapy Genetically Modified Foods and Health, a Second Interim Statement British Medical Association March 2004 Retrieved March 21, 2016 In our view, the potential for GM foods to cause harmful health effects is very small and many of the concerns expressed apply with equal vigor to conventionally derived foods. However, safety concerns cannot, as yet, be dismissed completely on the basis of information currently available. When seeking to optimize the balance between benefits and risks, it is prudent to err on the side of caution and, above all, learn from accumulating knowledge and experience. Any new technology such as genetic modification must be examined for possible benefits and risks to human health and the environment. As with all novel foods, Safety assessments in relation to GM foods must be made on a case-by-case -case basis. Conservation Use Members of the GM Jury Project were briefed on various aspects of genetic modification by a diverse group of acknowledged experts in the relevant subjects. The GM jury reached the conclusion that the sale of GM foods currently available should be halted and the moratorium on commercial growth of GM crops should be continued. These conclusions were based on the precautionary principle and lack of evidence of any benefit. The jury expressed concern over the impact of GM crops on farming, the environment, food safety, and other potential health effects. The Royal Society Review concluded that the risks to human health associated with the use of specific viral DNA sequences in GM plants are negligible, and while calling for caution in the introduction of potential allergens into food crops, stressed the absence of evidence that commercially available GM foods cause clinical allergic manifestations. 
The BMA shares the view that that there is no robust evidence to prove that GM foods are unsafe but we endorse the call for further research and surveillance to provide convincing evidence of safety and benefit. Fish Frogs Invertebrates Fruit flies Mosquitoes Bollworms Nadaria Regulation Controversy